Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends, Welcome to the Unknown Bible, the broadcast ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. Join us now for today's Bible study with our pastor, Bevan Zwelder. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, we find a psalm of David. And this particular psalm of David is a thanksgiving psalm. In 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7, we read this, Then on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord in the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Notice, this psalm is to thank the Lord. It's a thanksgiving psalm. Now, this particular psalm that we read in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 runs from verse 7 all the way down to verse 36. And you're going to find that down to verse 22, uh, this psalm also is recorded in Psalm 105, verses 1 through 15. It's the same one. There are not exact words, but you can see uh, the things that David is saying here are recorded there. Now, we're going to study this psalm in 1 Chronicles chapter 16 today because in several places, David actually mentions the word thanks. And that reminds us about being thankful. You see, we can follow the example of David in this Thanksgiving psalm to help us understand things for which we can thank God. You, in other words, if, Saul, if, if David can pen, can pen this psalm thanking the Lord specifically, recording things for which he wants to thank God, then it, then it sets up like a template or it sets up like an example for you and me. And we can follow what he did here and say, you know something? As he thanked the Lord for these things, we can thank the Lord for the same things. As in this Thanksgiving psalm, we can thank the Lord, first of all, for his name. Let's go. And what we're going to do is we're going to read and then comment. Read and then comment. Read and then comment until we go through the whole part. Because I'm, I'm concerned that if I read from verse 7 to 36, uh, we're, you're going to lose track with me, but if we take it piece by piece, we can stay together. All right? So, <clears throat> David starts out and he says that on that day, David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. All right, here's the first thing. Verse 8, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Now notice, he says, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon His name. Well, the first thing I see in here then is we can thank God for His name. You know, when you, and we're going to study this a little bit today in the, in, in the study of this psalm, but when you think about the name of God, the name of Jesus Christ, you know, one of the first things that comes to my mind is this. You have someone that you can cry out to who recognizes your voice. He recognizes when you call out his name. Here's the picture. The picture is a mother who recognizes her child's voice when he calls out, Mom! You know, it's funny, but there could be six or eight kids and their parents, and one child you know, says, Mom, the instinct probably is for all mothers to turn and look the first time. But the second time, they are honing in on that voice. And the mother of that child knows who's calling. There is a recognition. That child knows the name to call, Mom. And the mother knows the voice of that child. And I thank God for His name. We call Him Father. Father. When you wake up in the morning and you're lying in bed and you say, Father, 
Or you get up in the morning and you wipe the sleep out of your eyes and you start making your way toward the kitchen so you can make your first cup of coffee. And you say, Father. Or you finally make that coffee and then your brain cells are beginning to fire and, and then you say, Father. In other words, I don't know how soon it is after you begin to arise that you call upon that name. <laughs> but every morning... You're calling out to the Lord. Father, thank you for a good night's sleep. Father, thank you that I'm feeling good today. Father, thank you for taking care of us through the night. We've, we've made it through safely. Whatever, however you start, as soon as you open your mouth and you say, Father, <laughs> you are talking to somebody. You are talking to the Lord. He knows your voice. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, he says, and he knows your voice. Listen, his is the exalted name, unlike all the man-made gods of the world. Men invoke their names, but there's no one there. I remember traveling in Uganda, traveling in the Philippines, traveling other places where we hear the morning call to prayer over the loudspeaker. And, 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 and men are bowing before their God. There's no one there. There's no one there. You see, in 1 Kings chapter 18, in 1 Kings chapter 18, when, when there was a big showdown on Mount Carmel to settle Israel's mind about their God, uh, they were halting between two opinions. They didn't know whether to follow Baal or whether to follow the Lord God. And when the Baal worshipers began to pray to their God to call down fire upon the bullock that was being sacrificed, and they had leaped upon the altar, watch it, they weren't getting an answer. In verse 26, they called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, but they weren't getting an answer. And in verse 27, it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awake. And then they cut themselves with knives and lancets and the blood gushed out and they still cried. But you know what? There was neither voice nor any to answer nor any that regarded you know why? There wasn't anybody there. There never is. That's the shocking thing. Pe people say, you know, all these gods are the same. They're not. They're not even close to the same and can't be. And the reason that they can't be is there's only one of them who can answer. <clears throat> there's only one of them who hears. And that's our God. <laughs> and, and we call him by name. Father. <laughs> Oh, that's so sweet. That's so sweet. See, the, the gods uh, the, uh, that are man-made, these idols, they're silver and they're gold. Our God, he does whatever he pleases. That's Psalm 115, verses 3 through 8. They have mouths, but they don't speak. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. You know why? They're not there. <laughs> it's just a statue. It's a man-made God. Our God, our God, our Father, our triune God manifested himself in flesh. When, when Mary's son was born, there was a fulfillment of prophecy. Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That's God manifest in the flesh. And, and you know, among other things, he came so that he could be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. But he's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He knows what we're going through when we call out to him. He's in heaven where he sits on the throne above everything and above everyone in the universe. He is preeminent. There is no one, there is nothing 
greater than our God. His name is highly exalted. He is before all things, and by Him all things consist. Everything was made. By Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him. He is above them all. You know what the Bible tells us? In Proverbs 18.10, the Bible says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. I go along with the hymn writer. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Thank God for his name. Now, in this Thanksgiving psalm in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, we find something else for which we can thank God. We can thank God for his wondrous works. Now, <laughs> this portion of the psalm goes all the way from verse 9 to verse 33. So we'll pick pieces and, and, and break down the works to some very things that we want to point out and then thank God for. You see, the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, Sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. All right, what are they? Look at verse 12. Remember this, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. Now you're going to see in this psalm that, that the Lord talks about these marvelous works these wonders, these judgments, and then talks about the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the 12 tribes to give them the land of Canaan, and then how they wandered from nation to nation out there in the wilderness, and, and God suffered no man to do them wrong. The reason I'm showing that chronology is to simply say the marvelous works, I believe, that David is pointing out here in verse 12 are the wonders and judgments and works that he did in the land of Egypt before they came out into the wilderness. What God did in Egypt was phenomenal. He did things that have never been done before and showed himself that he is God. At first, you know, the magicians are going along with this and he turns water into blood and they imitate that. I think it was magic, just their magicians. I don't believe it was the real deal. And and the Lord eventually brings up lice from the dust. And when the Lord brings up lice from the dust, the magicians try that one. Then they go to Pharaoh and they say, this is the finger of God. In other words, what's going on now, we cannot imitate. Why? Because it's bringing life from dust is a creative act. It's a powerful thing that God did. And they said, this is the finger of God. Now, you know something? You and I need to think about the things our great God has done in our lives and thank him for those things. Has God ever worked a miracle in your life? Now, when I say that, I, I realize that sometimes we're looking for the sky to fall or or, or the sun to stand still, like it did for Joshua, in order to think that God has done something big in our life that shows his handiwork in our lives. I'm telling you, if you just sit down and think about his works, his wonders, and his judgments in your life, you begin to realize that God has had his hand on you doing all kinds of things, we might say, behind the scenes, that is, without calling attention to himself, and we've just overlooked those things. And we need to sit down and contemplate all that God has done. Um, and, and realize the great, the great works of God on our behalf and in our lives. And then thank Him for those wondrous works. I don't want to start naming the things in my life. Because it would distract from you thinking about the things that God has done in your life. But, oh, we need to think about those. We need to thank him for those. And then we see in verses 15 to 19 some more of his wondrous works. David just says, thank God for his wondrous works. Well, those things that he does for us personally. In First Chronicles chapter 16, verses 15 to 19, we also see that David is thanking God for his covenant. In verses 15 to 19, David says, be you mindful always of his covenant. 
the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant, which he made with Abraham and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance when you were but few, even a few and strangers in it. You know what that is? That is an everlasting covenant. What, what you're reading here is that God th said to Abraham, I'll give you some land. And he told him what it is, this land of Canaan. Isaac, same thing. Jacob, same thing. Twelve tribes, you're going to do this. You're going to get the land of Canaan. And it's an everlasting covenant. That covenant is still in effect unto this day. You see, God hasn't changed his thought about it at all. That, that whole decision by the United Nations to offer a two-state solution in that land, it's not going to work. Because it's contrary to this covenant. Now you say, well, what does that have to do with us? When we thank God for his wondrous works, we can thank him for his covenant that he made with us. And you know what that covenant is? That covenant is that once he saved us, we would be saved forever. Have you ever just sat down and said, thank God for eternal security? If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be saved today. Listen, we can also thank God for the wondrous works of his protection. Look in verses 20 and 22 of 1 Chronicles chapter 16. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. The Lord protected Israel from their enemies the whole time that they wandered in the wilderness. And likewise, the Lord protects us from our enemies. I know there is a devil, and I know the devil is more powerful than we are. And though the devil attacks, he can never get your soul. And listen, when you live by faith, you have God's protection because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Have you ever just sat down and said, thank God for the whole armor of God. I have a shield of faith, sword of the spirit, loins girt about with the truth. Feet shot with preparation of the gospel of peace. Blessed prayed of righteousness and head, and my head is covered with the helmet of salvation. <laughs> I'm ready. Quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Isn't that amazing? David goes on to say, you want to thank God for another wondrous work? I'll tell you another one. His creation. Look in verse 26 of First Chronicles chapter 16. First Chronicles 16, 26. For all the gods of the people are idols. We've seen that. But the Lord made the heavens. <clears throat> Whether you believe it or not, God made the heavens. Can you imagine what it would be like if the evolutionists were right? That'd be horrible. But they're not. Now, I thank God that he is the creator and made it plain to us in the word of God that that's what he's done. I mean, as the creator, God made the sun, made the moon, made the stars, and they all obey his command. Have you ever just gone out and taking a look around at the beauty of God's creation. I mean, we're in a cursed earth, okay. But, but what he's done is absolutely beautiful. And we should thank him every time we can enjoy his handiwork. I love to be outside and see birds fly over. And I think, I know, I know the God that created those birds. I love to be at home with the windows open and hear birds outside, hear the noises. And listen to the squirrels chatter. I love to see the mountains. To be in them and to see them. We're going back through some old photos. And kind of sorting them out. Had you know boxes full of them. You probably have some too. And seeing scenes that we've been able to enjoy around our country. Mountains and water. Beautiful things in the water. Mm. You ever just get out there and say thank you Lord. For the beauty of your creation. I mean, really and truly, that's something to be thankful for. He allows us. You ever seen a sunset? Have you ever seen the beauty of the sunrise? It's glorious. And you can thank God every time you see that. We can also thank God, another one of his wondrous works, for his millennial reign. Verses 30 to 33 in First Chronicles chapter 16. 
Fear before him all the earth, the world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. It's going to be moved before he comes in the tribulation. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nations, here it is, the Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out. Can you imagine all the trees singing? Watch it. At the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. So we can thank the Lord for his millennial reign. Jesus is going to rule this earth from the throne of David for 1,000 years. We should be so thankful for his coming reign. Why? Because the devil is going to be chained in the bottomless pit. There will finally be peace on earth. You're going to get to see how this earth is supposed to be run. And we will get to reign with him. And we will see our God exalted in the earth. No more taking the name of God in vain. No more governments saying, well, we can't put uh, references to Jesus Christ in public places. All that. You know, let me tell you something. We won't be the underdogs then. Thank God. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you, I get excited when I think about it. Uh, like John said, even so come Lord Jesus. I'm ready to see him. I am really, really ready to see the Lord. So we can thank God for his name. We can thank God for his wondrous works. Those of the past, those of his covenant, those of his protection, those of his creation, those of his millennial reign coming. Ah, oh, so thankful. And then I already read the verse, verse 34 in first Chronicles chapter 16. We can thank God for his mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Watch it for his mercy endureth forever. Now, if you like to read the Psalms, <clears throat> we find in Psalm 136, thanking God over and over again for his mercy. Psalm 136, verse 1, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks unto the God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. O give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endureth forever. First three verses. And you get to the end of that psalm, verse 26, O give thanks unto the God of heaven, for his mercy endureth forever. You know what the psalmist is thanking God for in Psalm 136? His mercy. And you know what you and I can thank God for? His mercy. If it weren't, God, if it weren't for God's mercy, Israel would be doomed. They would no longer be here. But God's had mercy. If it weren't for God's mercy, we would be doomed. I don't know about you. But it overwhelms me to consider God's mercy, considering my sin. Just unbelievable what he's done for me and what he's done for you. I sit here and I think, oh, woe is me. What can I be thankful for? Thank God for his mercy. You wouldn't even be talking to him. You wouldn't be listening to this broadcast today if it weren't for the mercy of God. But he's had mercy on us and he does have mercy on us. And then in verse 35, something else. Thank God for his salvation. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 35. And say, ye save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Well, that's obviously a reference to the Lord saving Israel that you read about in Romans chapter 11, verses 25 to 27. All Israel shall be saved when Jesus returns. But may I say this? <laughs> We can thank God for his salvation. We've already done so when we thank you for his name and thank you for his mercy. But think of this. We can thank God because the Lord will save any sinner who will call upon the name of the Lord. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank God. Thank God that we're saved. But thank God that we can preach the gospel to other sinners so that they can be saved. Don't you know somebody that you want to be saved? Thank God they can be saved. We need to tell them, of course. We need to pray for them, even more importantly. And, and we need to be ready for the Lord to prepare his message in our hearts that we can speak to them. Have you ever considered what a privilege it is for you and I to be able to tell somebody else about the Lord Jesus Christ? A friend of mine one time said, a witness can only tell what he knows and he said i am just a beggar telling another beggar where i found bread there's something really profound about that because the lord extended mercy to us and if you think about 
our lives compared to the sinless life of the Lord Jesus Christ, how in the world would he use us as ministers of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? We're not perfect like he is. We're not sinless like he is. But you know something? Because of his mercy, because of his wondrous works in our lives, because of his name, we have a story to tell. We have a testimony. We actually have something to say, a witness. Because we've seen God do something through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives that's an absolute miracle. You're not the same person you were before you got saved. I'm not the same person that I was before I got saved. The wondrous works of God in your life and in my life are evident in the change and, and the continual mercy that we enjoy. We have a story to tell. When our feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, when we get an opportunity to preach the gospel to other sinners so they can be saved, you know what? They have somebody like themselves. They have somebody who's been in the same case they're in. They have somebody who can relate. Oh, I pray that God will use us. Thank God, thank God that we have the privilege of being used by our Savior to tell others how they too can be saved through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. So from reading the psalm that's in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, <laughs> We, we have a lot to learn from this Thanksgiving psalm. I mean, we ought to go back and meditate on what we've seen here and digest this so that our Thanksgiving is just normal and natural every time we think of these things and see these things. Now, those of us who are saved, we have much for which to be thankful. But if you're not saved yet, you have much for which to be thankful. Why? Because you can be saved right now. How? By trusting in Jesus Christ. There's none other name given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. You have been listening to The Unknown Bible, the radio ministry of Bible Believers Baptist Church in Corpus Christi, Texas. For information about our church, go to our church website at www.my3bc.com. That's my, the number three, bc.com. If you would like to contact us by telephone, our number is 361-241-6100. Bible Believers Baptist Church is a Bible-believing church located at 1701 Rand Morgan Road. If you are not currently a member of a Bible-believing church and you are looking for a church with an uncompromising stand on the words of God, come visit with us this Sunday or Wednesday. We would love to see you. Amen.